For the next 30 minutes, we will explore the unexplained. From mysteries beyond our galaxy, to ghostly phenomena in our own backyard, we will dive into our psychic abilities and explore everything from conspiracies to the just plain weird. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. If the truth is out there, we will find it. But only by sheer accident. Yeah! 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 All right. Welcome to 30 Odd Minutes. It's great to have you guys back. We missed you, all you oddballs out there. We know what you're thinking. What does the future hold? And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about tonight. Very excited to be here. But don't forget, if you're watching the show live on our website, 30oddminutes.com, jump in the chat room because tonight, Sarah and the lovely and talented Matt Moniz are waiting to pass your questions up to our guest to talk about what's going on. Sarah, how's your car doing? <laughs> Why must you bring up such a painful ah. topic? Uh. Uh, it's sick. Uh. Thanks. So, anyway, so if we could have what some, does that have to do with the show? Is I don't that predicted? know. I just thought it would be good to bring up. If we could have some healing prayers for Sarah's car, <laughs> which would be the least <laughs> altruistic he healing about prayers last ever uh, nice. to do for anybody. But uh, Power yeah. of belief, man. Power bring of it. belief. Bring cause, it. Because these mechanics may not be able to help her. Matt, how have you been? <laughs> I've, I've missed Busy. You. Busy? What's new? Ah, all kinds of crazy little things. Great. Well, I'm glad our, our viewers know now. <laughs> a little Excellent. cryptic, yeah. All right, if you watched the show last week, you know we talked about Bigfoot, and we made footprints. We made casts of our actual feet. Matt is getting ready and willing and able to show us. It took a whole week for them to drive, but look at these babies. Check these things out. How cool is this? Huh? Who's that? Oh. That's mine, my footprint, right? And Sarah's, right? We could tell it's very dainty. Dang, stop. <laughs> and finally, My God, look at Andrew the Lake. Whoa. Andrew Lake's footprint, beautiful. Look at that. Now, can we compare it to the actual footprint cast we have of Bigfoot? Now, here's the thing. Look at that. Really, not that far off. I think you're just uh, <laughs> Andrew. I think you're just a few pounds away from uh, yeah. from He's being only a couple generations, you know, away ready to go. So Bigfoot. anyway, excellent. Sarah, did we get any uh, viewer emails this week? Yes, well, yes, but we got some uh, really cool tweets and a Facebook comment I want to read. So, tweets we got from Cindy C21 says, Super awesome show, always is. Too bad we can't get your show reliably here, so we're glad you make it visible elsewhere. Love it. And from a Kelly Krieger who says, Big feet, big personality. Cute. And then we have a Facebook comment from Jandro Gamboa. Cool name. I've only had one paranormal experience in my life, and in a completely related statement, I'd really appreciate a discussion on the matter of doppelgangers. Not a whole show necessarily, but it would mean tons to me. Stay odd. I think that's a good idea. Doppelgangers. doppelgangers. That would be a great show. We will definitely cover it. Love it. Cool no question. No question. But tonight, we're going to be talking about the future, astrology, and uh, predictions. How do we predict the future? Is it in the stars? Not psychically, but math, computer software, and what a guest we have to do it. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's guest is an author and a captivating speaker. He was recognized in the 2003 Marquee Who's Who in America, and he's the personal counselor of many celebrities, including Ivana Trump, Peter Fonda, Gary Busey, John Gray, and many others. You've heard him on Coast to Coast AM, the BBC in London, numerous other television and radio programs, live from Phoenix, Arizona. Please put your hands together for Dr. Louis Turi. Yeah. 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 How are you, sir? Sound up. All right. How are you? Absolutely wonderful, Jeff. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> All right. Thank you for coming and being with us tonight. I appreciate it. You've also run my star chart. We will get to that later in the show, I promise, so people get some insight into me. Why not? Maybe I will get some insight into me. I, I could use it. I could use the help. Uh, but let's start with, you're from Provence, France. Bonsoir, bonjour. Uh, and someone else from there, uh, Nostradamus. Nostradamus, uh, let's talk about him. He lived in the mid-16th century. I think a lot of people are familiar with his quatrains. One of the great seers of all times, predicted all kinds of things. Hitler, uh, I think one of, the, one of the, uh, the lines in the sand, we talk about him. Talk about how he inspired you in your work. Well, first of all, you have to remember that I have nothing to do with Nostradamus. I just was born under the same stars. <laughs> okay, and fair enough. I spent many years recandling his 16th century Dalai astrology 
uh, which has nothing to do with modern astrology or Mrs. Cleo. It's a very solid discipline. Nostradamus was gifted by the stars naturally to enter the archetypal realm of consciousness and enabling himself to foresee the future. And I had that kind of gift at the same time. Okay, fair enough. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about the astrological chart you're using. Um, so you use the thirteenth signs, correct? I use the dragon, which is part of the thirteenth sign of, of the new um, constellation. As you know, scientists discover a new constellation every day. Sure. But basically, it's been there forever. So, Ophelius, the serpent, the dragon. We're talking about the same thing, here, Jeff. Okay, and so this is this this is the system that you're using now. How? Yes. We've done shows on astrology in the past. Uh, very interesting, you know, field. We've talked about how how, how uncanny it is that our, our various uh, signs, the signs we were born under, um, and it really do apply to us. And, and if nothing else, it's it's where you start in the race. You know, I was born in the summer, so uh, you know my life cycle began there and, and had certain you know effects that way. But but talk about when we get into you know minutia, things like predicting crimes and and hurricanes and tsunamis. How can we tell by the stars what's coming up? Well, first of all, understand I don't predict anything. I'm not a psychic. Okay, sure. as, yeah. much, as much as you know, nature has a pattern. History repeats itself. The news repeats themselves. The seasons are coming back. So I understand the gearbox. I understand the cosmic code. And with my software, I'm able to use that very specific but accurate timing that allows me to do. Oh, I some dates. Okay, fair enough. Now, here's here's the interesting thing. Uh, Dave Schrader from Darkness Radio. He's a, he's been on our show in the past. He's a buddy of ours. He's actually the person that told me you have to get Dr. Turi on thirty odd thirty odd minutes. You got to get Thanks. this guy uh, because here's what happened. Dr. Turi went on uh, Darkness Radio about a close to a month ago now and made several predictions. One was that uh, the New York State serial killer on April fourth, fifth, and sixth, and ninth, tenth, and eleventh. Either uh, more bodies, new developments, and what happened? I believe it was on the tenth. Was uh, more bodies were discovered? So it was this kind of thing that said that had Dave say, "You got to come back on the show." And again, you, he comes back, and again he talks about thousands being displaced on April. Uh, I believe it was. I'm sorry, ninth, tenth, and eleventh, or tenth, eleventh, and twelfth, was it? And it turns out that what happened yesterday, uh, thousands displaced in Japan due to the radiation leaks and, of course, other earthquakes. So you're getting these hits again and again. Um, how do you do it? How are you, how are you combining you know, star charts with, you know, with these predictions? Yeah. Jeff, if you were to build a cosmic consciousness, if you were to become a, my, one of my students, you would do it exactly the same. I'm telling you, I'm not a psychic. It's yep. a matter of understanding how the gearbox, the universal mind works. It's so very easy. Sudden up. Would it be the cops? Would it be our infantile scientific uh, scientific groups out there? Uh, they're missing so much, but not one to cast aside the fear of the ridicule and investigate the beauty and the truth of the cosmic code. It can't be done. You can do it. Anybody can do it. Okay. Well, how do you do it? <laughs> how how do you how do we how do we you know, okay. decode this? Uh, but there is different windows that controls the affairs of mankind. For example, Pluto which is called in Greek mythology the Lord of Hades, the Lord of Darkness. This, this planet is a planet. It's not just a dwarf thing. The, the brain of the scientist is dwarfed. It. Not Pluto. Pluto is a real solid planet and happens to be, as well as it is the farthest, the most strongest, the most obvious energy you would get on the affairs involving the police, the crooks, um, sex, anything to do with regeneration, uh, the FBI, the CIA, this energy rules the police. And when this window comes down, and each time I made a prediction, even on Coast to Coast with George Norrie, cops getting killed, a criminals getting totally out of orders, and we found, again, three more bodies as predicted. Predicted. I don't predict anything. I see it happening. And if this wisdom was largely available, taught in our universities and college and accepted as a discipline, chances are less cops would be killed, less legal suit would be filled, and we would be much better off working in harmony with the cosmic codes. So you've been doing this a long time, and you've made many successful predictions. Are you finding now police and, and law enforcement agencies are starting to come to you uh, saying, tell us, what do you see? Tell, tell us when it's safe, when it's not safe. 
Oh my gosh. You know what? I have a secret list, which I believe you're a part of it. And there is FBI agents, there is uh, a government agents, there is uh, uh, people in power, politicians, there is uh, news media like you. And do you think the cops, the FBI or the CIA, are, as of yet, have connected with me? No, they think I am another Mrs. Cleo, and that's where the problem is. They don't see me as a scientist just yet. Right, okay, well t tell us about the software you're using. When, uh, you know, how do you apply it to, let's say, forthcoming natural disasters? Okay, well, first of all, there is uh, 85 different ways to make an astrological chart, mm -hmm. and none of them has helped me to be as accurate what I'm famous for. I worked with Alloan Software in Los Angeles, and I asked John to redesign the software in a very simplistic way, which uh, involved the dragon. You can see the dragon. Yep. Only the software has the head and the tail of the dragon, which is, of course, a fishes, which is the serpent, which is the new zodiac, right. where I focus all my uh, interest and my prediction on. So once you understand this dragon, different house, different affairs uh, being regimented by this dragon, uh, the future is the reincarnation of the thought. That's why repetitions are always repetition, and the news will always repeat themselves as much as the weather or history. I have uncovered the key, that's all. But science has not yet understood the difference between education and intelligence, and that's where the problem is. Gotcha. Well, in the past, we've talked about how astrologers have been uh, one of the first record keepers. They've noticed when... You know, when, when certain stars, certain planets are aligned a certain way, it's, it's bad for crops. It's a good time for, for war or whatever. Uh, this, is, this goes back yes. thousands of years, of course. So if we... If, Jeff, go ahead. Let, me, let me just real fast before I, I stop channeling here. The three wise men following the stars of the birth of Christ were king, wise men. They were astrologers, and they were already pinpointing and knowing the energy that was going to create Jesus and his ministry. The problem is the true Jesus ministry involving our father in the heavens or teaching the stars to his followers was cast aside by a politically oriented church of the 13th and 14th century. So at the very, very early stage, the Jesus ministry was just totally cast aside. And then when we mess up, um, the cosmic code, when you go against the signs of God's universal will, you get that chaos. And this is why this world is such an Ethiopian state, where we can change all that if we decide to upgrade our reasoning, upgrade our perception, and finally work in harmony with the cosmic codes. But if the cosmic codes are predicting these, these horrible you know, earthquakes, tsunamis, things like that, uh, can we? Can that be undone? Can we undo future devastation? Yes, yes, because what people do not know is that the part of God in you is much stronger than the stars. So once you understand how you have been computerized by your stars and you follow where God wants you to operate and what God wants you to be, you're going to get there faster and safely. However, uh, you can also use those stars um, productively but at this, at this time now, I'm the only one to don't wear any glasses and perceive this work. And I'm hoping that more people like you will help me to pass on my message so people will understand that the future is the reincarnation of God. And we cannot play with the super conscious in time and space, which means if you're constantly negative, a magnet will attract a piece of wood, you're going to attract this. Let's say, for example, uh, our congressman uh, Giffords, she made an incredible, incredible uh, recovery being shot in the head so fast. And the doctors are wondering, how is that possible? The same happened to me when I had cancer. And all my people that read my newsletters all over the world, uh, they don't want to lose Dr. Cherry. We don't want to lose Congressman Gifford. So they start to send a lot of endorsing positive thought. And again, I repeat myself. The future is nothing else than the reincarnation of the thought. The superconscious does not reason. The superconscious does not know the difference between the fear or the wishes and brings it to you. So you have to understand the cosmic code and you have to understand and work with the supraconscious in time and space. And the sad reality is 99.9% .9 of the people walking this earth are not directly related to Einstein. Right, understood. So we can, we can create our own future through will, through yes. intent. 
Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Totally Put it this way, Jeff, real fast. You are where you are and you are surrounded by what you have because you have created it. You were made in the image of, of God. You like it or not, you know it or not, you have the power of creation. Yeah. Fair enough. That's true. I have a child, too. I clearly have the power of creation. And I made websites. <laughs> I made a couple of websites, too. We have questions for you, please, Dr. <laughs> Turi. Uh, Matt, tell us. Yes, I got one from BioDaver. He, he wants to know your thoughts on 2012 as well as the Mayan calendar. 2012 and the Mayan calendar. That's, uh, that's obviously a hot topic coming up next year. Well, I have made the uh, Universal Day, Dr. Julie Universal Day of Prayer, the day after the 22nd of December. Oh, that good. tells you what's going to happen. The year 2012 is um, a golden door, a golden gate, which will allow humanity to raise its own perception of the divine. And this is the end of the age of Pisces, the age of deception, of religion, confinement, life. We are moving into the age of Aquarius, electronics, UFO, the future of humanity. We are talking about the cosmic code, the superconscious in time and space. That energy is so refined, and we are moving in that direction as of 2012. Very good. And so you think it's just a cycle. The calendar will repeat. It'll go around again. There is no death. A worm in the water transforms into a butterfly. You have the proof of reincarnation right here, right now. It is an uplifting energy that will raise humanity awareness. It's all. Think about this. There's a preacher. His name escapes me right now. He believes the world is going to an end or, or, or the, uh, you know, the, the second coming is in May, some date in May. But, but my point is, not that I think he's correct, my point is, I think that humanity always needs to think the end is sort of near, kind of on the horizon, coming up. Uh, we've always felt that way. 2000 was going to be, you know, the great disaster. Exactly. And we survived. Y2K. Y2K. <laughs> of course. We somehow survived Y2K and, and got by it. No, Why do you think we need that? Why do we need, need to know the end is so close? Well, the point is uh, people can only relate to me because of their education, their intelligence, their experiences, and most of all, their UCI, which means unique celestial identity. So a lot of people only have a dogmatic, archaic religious material, which is promising in the end. They are feeding evil, misinterpreting, and misusing the supraconscious in time and space, which produce an accelerating uh, of this negative energy and, and the, uh, all the, the natural disaster you have around you. Incidentally, the power of the mind is so powerful. This is how the Egyptians built the pyramids. But of course, you're going to have the logical, the scientists say, oh, that can be. Because they do not know that many of these appear civilization before us use the cosmic code and understood uh, God. God, the Bible says, I'll talk to you, you won't hear me. I present myself to you, you won't see me. One has to raise his cosmic consciousness, Jeff, to understand how the Creator speaks through his celestial design. And that's what I'm here for, to help to raise to that level. All right, well, let's, let's get personal now. You ran my chart last night. We have a, a picture of it. We'll bring it right up. Last night you were kind enough to, to run my chart. Here it is. Here's a, a, a look at it for everybody at home. Uh, it's okay. I, born August 8th, 1974, in the morning. And, and through running this through your software, what have you come up with? Uh, it's all on the table. Spill it all. No <laughs> secrets. I don't care. <laughs> all right. Well, you ask, right? Well, first, of all, <laughs> first of all, you were born in August during the summer. And during the day, every planet shines away. This means that God wants you to shine, wants, God wants you to have a stage. Most importantly, your Mercury, which is the God in Greek mythology that had wings on the back of his heels, that is the planet of communication. This Mercury is very close to your sun. This means you were born with a solar mind. One of your mission will be to promote the light, establish the light to the children of tomorrow. And you're already doing it because you're responding like everybody else through the power of the stars. Now, your head of the dragon, which happens to be your vicious sign, is Sagittarius, the teacher, the philosopher. You're not allowed to do anything small when you have a dragon saving Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius was your connection with pointers. I'm one of those that may challenge you against science and religion and help you to promote your message widely all over to the world. So this dragon said is right on your three files, giving you a hidden Leo dragon, which is dignified. So anything you're doing now, I'm telling you, it's going to benefit the children of tomorrow. Now, you still have fears or 
the fears of not being a good dad, the fear of not being able to pay for your bills uh, or to have enough food on the table. These are our inner fears that you maintain on your subconscious. And again, I repeat myself, your subconscious does not know the difference between the fears or the, or the wishes. So don't feed evil. Don't endorse and support any one of your fears and shut down anything that is negative if you can. Or, or if you have to be a recipient, just laugh about it, do like I do, okay? Now, what I see with you, your tail of the dragon is in Gemini, which means you're a master in, in communication and you are a double, like me, I have the same energy. So you're gonna have uh, everything in your life by two, by four, by six, sometimes it's two marriage, or like me, two dogs, two boats, and two, uh, two wives, <laughs> my duality. <laughs> and that gives you gift also uh, in communication. Leo oh was France and Italy. That's why we you say French are romantic. It affect our language. And that's why you attract. Yeah. That's why you attract that energy of Leo and me being French and half Italian, half Sicilian. So all it's all about energy that people do not yet recognize. This Leo is against the law if you're born in August to work for anybody. If you can't do that, it's going against God's rules. You have to build that stage, you have to promote that light and be a recipient and uh, an offering of light. Most importantly, we carry a tremendous amount of past life with the Mayan, the Incas, the Sumerian, um, and the Atlantid, and all those disappeared civilizations were fully, fully aware of the cosmic rules. So that is your legacy, and you have decided to reincarnate on this dense physical world to be a philosopher, a teacher, a promoter of the light, or the Leo, the light, the sun, the king. All right, tell me the bad stuff. Wow. Tell me the bad, the bad stuff. Side, you paid him. You gotta be careful not to lie because you have so many different personalities. You gotta keep the ego in control. <laughs> <laughs> the ego in control. So this stuff is real. Wait a minute. <laughs> His credibility was just the old man. Donald uh, Trump. Yes. And that's why right now, he, the dragon set of the year is conjuncting your dragon. This is why you're gonna get given great opportunity to explain, and so is Donald Trump. But the ego and the lies is something you have to be careful. You have the same dragon than Donald Trump and also uh, Clinton. That's why we said uh, Clinton was a little bit of a liar and he didn't swallow whatever it is. You know, this dual energy, Roosevelt, uh, President Roosevelt, has all, had also this dual dragon. And that's perfect for selling. It's perfect to adapt to people. It's perfect to communicate. But at the same time, you cannot use it the wrong way because Mercury, used the wrong way, produce liars and cheaters and duel that have uh, no integrity. So you gotta be cautious with that. Secondly, as a Leo, you're the son of light and life. You cannot nurture your fear of death, fear of disease, because that would go straight to your heart because the Leo rules the heart on the medical aspect of my work. Okay, very good. Well, thank you. Thank you for the good side and the bad side. <laughs> Tremendous ego. There's. Plenty of people in this room who would agree with you. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I, can't spare you. I cannot spare you. You ask for it. Yes. No, I, I, I appreciate it. No worries. Okay, Donald Trump, you actually, on your website, you have, uh, and we'll have links to your website from ours, of course, you, you've, he's clearly making a run for, for the presidency. How is that going to turn out for him? Uh, how, how is it looking for Donald Trump? Well, the head of the dragon is on his side. So it is not because he's being smart and he has millions of dollars. It's because the cosmic code is endorsing him, it's pushing him towards more fame. There is no accident. Even even on your on, on your side, you say, you know, sheer accident? I don't believe in accident. For me to be on your show today, Jeff, is absolutely not an accident. Okay, so as far as he is concerned, uh, I am I am doing is the life and fate of um, Donald Trump right now on my website, and soon I will expose his celestial identity. I will expose his potential. I will expose his his fate, his good, his shortcoming, everything, and it's up to the American people to vote for him or not. But the stars are endorsing him. I did the, the same thing with other. Uh, people that are also in the, in, uh, on, the president, uh, uh, on the president race, so to speak. So all this is on my website, of course. Right, right, of course. And, uh, you know, these people make the news, and, and we wonder, you know, it, it's funny, too, especially with American politics. It doesn't seem to be about the elder statesman anymore. It seems to be all about celebrity. 
Donald Trump is a celebrity, but can we relate to a mega millionaire? I, you know. Yeah, but you have you still have to be very careful, Jeff, because uh, the uh, German people did not know about the stars, and they elected the president uh, uh, Hitler. And when you elect the president, we the people become, so to speak, his children, and we suffer his fate. That's why in the future, people will not elect president because daddy was there before, because they have money in the bank, or because they are a celebrity or certain statue. They will elect people because of their UCI, and that stands for unique celestial identity. Wouldn't that be an interesting uh, running platform? I'd love to see that on some of the commercials. Hey, we do have another question for you. Please hold tight. Sarah in, in the chat room, what do our we lovely viewers want to know? do, and your wife is in the chat room with us too, Dr. Turi. She's kind of taken over. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we have a question from Barb's. She wants to know what you think about psychic ability, how it relates to people's intentions if they're actually controlling their own future. What is psychic ability then? And also, are they just picking up maybe something that's already written in the stars? So uh, Barb wants to know about psychic ability. Do you believe in psychic ability? Are, are people picking up what's already in the stars, or is it, is it at something innate well, in all of us? No, psychic abilities are very real. Uh, Nostradamus and Don Casey, Madame Vladaski, were dealing with the superconscious in time and space, and they were able to enter the archetypal realm of consciousness. But Nostradamus, Edgar Casey, and Madame Vladaski, the three of them were born with the head of the dragon in Pisces. And Pisces is the key that dwell traditionally with the 12th house, which is the subconscious affairs. So if you are born with the dragon at the right place in your chart, then you are a born psychic as much as you could be born killer. It all depends on that dragon. And I wrote a 550 page book called The Power of the Dragon that explained why Hitler did what he did, why Nostradamus become Nostradamus, why killers, why, uh, gosh, it's incredible that the amount of information this book has. But that's me to know, and you know, you guys to find out. And I can only write the books and offer the the information. The only thing you have is that little voice inside of you that is, that's called intuition that says, you know, this guy knows what he's talking about. I might as well get his book. That's all you have. Then deal with it. Right, right. Fair enough. Okay, now when you met your wife, this is an important question, was your first question to her, what's your date of birth? I need to run your chart to see if we're compatible. Well, no, because I already knew, uh, I, I already knew uh, the way she was talking. Now, she's born in April and they are uh, Endless talker. I mean, you know, David Ike is, uh, is yeah, an Aries. Yeah. He, he talks for eight hours nonstop. This is the, the, the giveaway of any, anybody, any Aries. They are talking machines. And you being a Leo, you're going to attract those Aries and those Sagittarius anyway. So you know these signs. So as a way, you're laughing, I know why not. But, you know, I know, I know, uh, I know by looking at people, by listening to people, by watching people, what, uh, what identity they have from God blessings. So it, it, so it was romantic, it wasn't math, is what you're saying. Now, 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 but, however, it's a good idea to find out if you have a partner where the dragon is, because if you happen, if your partner happens to have his dragon still uh, on your finances area, you will never be rich. If the dragon still is in your career, that person will never endorse to support you. If that dragon still is in your house of death, that person may end up killing you. Hey, wait a minute here. There is such a thing of killing people to get in the insurance money. This is a fact, and there is no accident. And that's where the cops haven't yet gathered. Right. All right. <laughs> this is amazing stuff. We've run right up to the end of the show. Dr. Tori, really appreciate you being with us tonight. It's been a pleasure. We will, of course, have links to all of your websites from ours, and uh, you can watch this show online. You can watch all of our archives, all for free. Download them all from iTunes uh, for free. It's out there because we love talking about the strange, unusual, and the odd. Dr. Tori, thank you for the, my chart. It was a pleasure to hear about how wonderful I am. <laughs> <laughs> thank and you folks. so much for having me. And again, for the prediction, anybody can go to my website and read the future predictions. Sounds good. Folks, until next time, please stay odd. Thank you. All right. Thank you.